Dave Pascoe is a 61-year-old man who ranks higher at the rejuvenation leaderboard than Brian Johnson, the entrepreneur who spends over $2 million a year to reverse his age. Dave Pascoe, on the other hand, spends only 30000 a year. Hey, my name is Seem, and in this video, I'm going to go through Dave Pascoe's health routines. What supplements does he take? What foods does he eat? What kind of exercise does he follow? And what other tests does he do? So the Rejuvenation Olympics is this leaderboard created by Brian Johnson and it just ranks people based on their epigenetic age tests. Dave Pascoe is number six on the uh, Rejuvenation Olympics and he's slightly ahead of Brian Johnson. His oldest two test average was 0.79 compared to Brian's 0.8 and his most recent test was 0.66 compared to Brian's 0.69. Now as a disclaimer, this leaderboard is very outdated. <laughs> so the last time this leaderboard was updated was in September 2023. So that's, you know, over six months ago. I personally should also be on the leaderboard. And in fact, I would be actually number one as of now, based on the uh, statistics from September 2023, my result would be 0 0.65 on uh, the three test average and my lowest score was 0 0.62. But uh, they just haven't updated the uh, leaderboard, which is a shame because, yeah, it would be interesting. But uh, apparently they're not really you know, willing to update it or there's just some other uh, problems related to that. But regardless, this video is about Dave Pascoe. So he has a website, davepascoe.net, where he outlines his uh, routine pretty much in detail. So we'll just uh, go through and I'm going to give my comments on these things. Chronological age, 61, will be 62 in August. Current epigenetic age, 37.95. Current pace of aging, 0 0.66. And he's number six on the Rejuvenation Olympics. Height, six feet, weight, 167 pounds. BMI, 22.1. Marital status, a single. Exercise, walking, running, hiking, P90X, yoga, Pilates, carol bike. So this is kind of AI-based a high intensity exercise machine where you're uh, riding on a bike. Currently taking over 150 plus supplements a day, 82 in the morning, 76 in the evening. So that's interesting. He takes more supplements than Brian Johnson and he has a slightly better result. So you would think like, hey, more supplements, more results. <laughs> but yeah, I'm personally taking only like 10 supplements a day. Uh, but yeah, I'm not, you know, uh, thinking that it's inherently necessary, but I don't think that taking more supplements isn't inherently harmful either. There's no evidence that taking more supplements is somehow harmful, but you know, will react to the exact list of supplements he takes and see what does he take. Self-observed differences from Brian Johnson. I'm chronologically 16 years older, so that's true. Dave is 61 and Brian is, I think, 45 or something like that. So yeah, there's a pretty big gap uh, between them. I'm not a vegan. I'm not calorie restricted. Uh, in fact, I don't pay attention to calories at all. By limiting simple carbohydrates, most of the time I eat as much as I like without gaining weight and apparently without increasing my rate of aging. I agree with that, that you don't need to be in a severely calorie restricted diet. But the caveat here is that he's still uh, pretty lean. He doesn't count calories or he doesn't think, it, think about the calories. But if you were to calculate all the calories that he does eat, then he probably falls somewhere around his maintenance calories. Maybe sometimes he goes below that, sometimes above that. But the average is that he's somewhere around his maintenance calories. He's not eating extra calories because he wouldn't have, you know, such leanness. So the fact that he is so lean is just a reflection of his calorie intake uh, as a whole. But yeah, you don't need to be in a super severe calorie restricted uh, diet. But uh, the most important part is to just not be overweight and be slightly on the leaner side. Dave is not on testosterone replacement therapy. His testosterone is pretty high, 808 to 1200. But the only thing he does take is a thyroid replacement hormone, so T3 and T4, because since uh, he's early 30s, his thyroid has stopped working. So let's look at his diet. What kind of uh, meals does he eat? Weekday breakfast, so his typical breakfast Monday through fri Friday, one green banana, I would suggest or presume it's because of the lower glycemic index and the higher resistant starch content, which uh, is going to be better for the glycemic control and uh, the gut microbiome potentially. Four heaping serving spoons of my chia nut berry bowl with ad additional unsweetened almond milk. So what's the chia nut berry bowl? Chia seeds soaked overnight in unsweetened almond milk, every type of organic nut and seed imaginable, so different kinds of nuts, chopped organic berries, raspberries, blueberries, beetroot powder, camu camu powder, maca powder, mangosteen powder, spirulina, Himalayan, tartary buckwheat, nutritional yeast, extra virgin olive oil, uh, spices, basil, ginger, lemon thyme, etc. Are all these various nut seeds spices necessary? Necessary? No. Beneficial? I believe yes. 
any small subset would be just fine, but a person would like to go for maximal nutritional density and diversity. So I agree, like you don't need to always eat all the possible nuts or all the possible berries out there, all the possible herbs out there. They have actually very similar effects and similar nutrient profile. So like if you compare blueberries to uh, blackberries, for example, they're very similar in terms of their polyphenol and anthocyanin content. Maybe there is some difference between like strawberries and blueberries, but they're still very similar in terms of that as well. And that applies to the nuts as well. So like almonds versus hazelnuts, there's not a lot of difference between them and the herbs as well. Basil and cumin or uh, lemon thyme, oregano, parsley, rosemary, they're herbs. They have very similar effects. So I agree that you don't need to always have a bunch of all the different possible options out there. You can get a lot of the benefits from a select few of these but uh, you know if you want to put in like slightly more extra effort and it takes maybe more time to prepare this food then uh, you can go for it next weekend breakfast so saturday and sunday on saturday at home one green banana again four egg omelette with arugula and pre-cooked mushrooms on sunday at church a happy goat omelette with extra eggs three and hash browns next lunch only a few times per week consisting of one or more of the following one can of wild planet sardines one can of mussels, one can of uh, oysters, one can of mackerel, 8 to 10 pre-cooked thawed frozen shrimp, so this is like a seafood uh, lunch, one avocado, one green apple, one pear, one orange, raw baby carrots, chunks of celery stalk, used like chips to scoop hummus, and chicken or beef bone broth. So uh, yeah, just a nice uh, lunch. I think it's a pretty uh, good one. Dinner, usually between 3 to 5 p.m., ending before 6 p.m., so making sure that he stops eating a few hours before bed. I agree, that's a good idea. All of my meat comes from butcher box and it's organic, grass-fed, grass-finished. I'm still learning, but I've got the following items down pretty well. Number one, a very large pre-made salad. So this is the salad that he makes, this large pre-made salad mix of organic greens, arugula, baby spinach, baby spring mix, Swiss chard, mix of homegrown sprouts and microgreens, uh, broccoli, fenugreek, lentils, monk, peas, radish, so these are sprouts, not the actual uh, vegetables, berries from my yard when in season, otherwise store-bought and organic when possible, blueberries, raspberries, blackberries, goji berries, shredded organic vegetables, beets, cabbage, carrots, parsnips, radishes, turnips, chopped tomatoes, Sliced cucumber, whole green olives, goat cheese, nutritional yeast, optional chicken breast in extra virgin olive oil and or thawed pre-cooked shrimp, dressing, apple cider vinegar, extra virgin olive oil, blend of cold pressed organic oils, black cumin oil, five seed blend, black sesame oil, coriander oil, flax oil, sunflower oil, pumpkin oil. So uh, I do agree that the Evo extra virgin olive oil is Uh, very healthy and uh, is also associated with many health benefits and health outcomes, better health outcomes generally. Apple cider vinegar, I agree as well, is a good salad dressing and also has benefits on the glycemic response, lipid, uh, postprandial lipids, etc. You know, I have heard a lot about black cumin oil, black seed oil, those kind of things. I've never tried them myself. I do think that extra virgin olive oil is probably better if you actually have the good quality extra virgin olive oil and these different oils uh, i've never tried them as well i haven't done research about them as well pumpkin oil and uh, coriander oil black sesame oil etc so for dinner is the pre-made salad that we just talked about large salad with different vegetables and oils and the number two option is a slow cooker meal such as chuck roast uh, cooked with baby carrots purple yellow and white onions mix of potatoes purple petite potatoes sweet potatoes yams cayenne pepper, red pepper flakes, garlic, fresh chopped homegrown herbs. And uh, the other option is pork ribs cooked with sauerkraut, baby carrots, fresh chopped homegrown herbs. B or a new wave infrared oven grilled meal such as Atlantic wild caught salmon, grass fed grown beef seasoned with Mrs. Dash. It's a very specific uh, routine. Or instant pot pressure cooked chicken breasts. Three or more choices of sides instant pre-cooked sweet potatoes, instant pot pre-cooked acorn squash, instant pot pre-cooked mushrooms with uh, baby bella, shiitake, white button, etc. And instant pot pre-cooked rice, mix of various varieties, cooked in cast of mushroom juice and chicken or beef bone broth. So different kinds of, uh, you know, I guess the option is like large salad, one of the meal of the meat options, uh, chuck roast, ribs, salmon or beef. And then the third option is some sort of carbohydrate, instant pot pre-cooked like yams, squash, mushrooms, or rice and broccoli. Let's move on with the supplements. What kind of 150 supplements does he take? 
All right, pre or post workout supplement shake. So I guess it's some sort of a protein shake. Consumption and contents vary depending upon variables such as fasting status and whether I'm pushing autophagy or pushing mTOR and growth. And, and uh, first ingredient is almond milk, uh, 12 ounces, unsweetened, aminos, one scoop, eight grams, colostrum, athletic greens, one scoop, beetroot powder, beta alanine, collagen peptides, creatine monohydrate, D ribose. Uh, citrulline, glutamine, leucine, lipids powder, which uh, is not specifically what kind of lipids is in, in the ingredients, liposomal glutathione, mitopure powder, so this urolithin A, which is a compound, helps with uh, mitochondrial function and mitophagy, plant sterol extract, free radical scavenger, raw phytoplankton, red powder, so uh, red vegetables and berries, Trehalose, which is a type of su- sugar that does promote autophagy, and whey protein, one scoop, 30 grams. So I guess this is either the pre- or the post-workout supplement, and I'm not sure uh, which when which type of the day does he take it. So this is the pre- and post-workout uh, supplement. It's got a lot of ingredients and uh, a lot of different flavors. I'm not sure how it would taste like if you have athletic greens, beetroot powder, and uh, trehalose and whey protein in the same uh, shake so yeah (laughs) would be interesting to taste uh, that kind of a shake but it's got a lot of ingredients and you know generally these ingredients do help with physical performance and uh, recovery so the ribose is uh, like a sugar molecule helps with energy production beta alanine helps with uh, the uh, acid buffering Citrulline helps with the pump, creatine helps with energy and uh, muscle strength. Collagen peptides help with the joint and skin. Colostrum helps with the gut and uh, also recovery. Then there's you got the aminos there, the whey protein, red powder. So yeah, it's got a lot of stuff. These are the supplements he takes on waking. So prescription drugs are the uh, thyroid hormones, levothyroxine and liothyronine. Bill Andrews TAM 818 which is a strong telomerase activator. It's scientifically proven to be more than 300 times stronger than any other anti-aging ingredient. So I haven't heard about this product. I'm not sure of the science behind it either. So telomerase uh, increases telomere growth, but uh, you know this telomerase can also be implicated in some uh, other negative health effects. So it's not necessarily something I would take myself, and I'm not sure of the science exactly. And the price is also pretty high, $800 for 90 capsules of 375 milligrams. So I'm not, you know, I wouldn't spend that kind of money. I'm not sure what kind of a science does it have as of uh, now. TA science says 25 milligrams. TA65 is a nutritional supplement extracted from Astragalus membrana canus, <laughs> dried root, and can help to maintain or rebuild telomeres. So this is another telomerase activator cell rejuvenation from Astragalus, and the price is also pretty hefty, $487 for 90 uh, capsules. So uh, again, I'm not aware of the science behind this product, and I'm not sure if it even has any proven uh, benefits. So, but, uh, you know, Dave does take it, he spends almost 500 for this and 800 for the other product, so he might find it valuable, but again, I personally wouldn't probably take it, because I guess the science isn't that clear, because if it really worked, and uh, really had you know, that kind of uh, miraculous effects, then many more people would take it. (laughs) And you would, you know, you would probably hear, you would probably hear more about it. But, you know, it's $487 for 90 capsules and 800 for the other 90 capsules. So over a thousand dollars for these uh, capsules alone. DHEA, 10 milligrams. So this is a hormone, a testosterone, a precursor, and it does generally go down with age. He doesn't take TRT, but uh, at his age, taking DHEA, might be effective if he had low testosterone. He says his testosterone is pretty high. So, um, you know, there's no evidence that people who have already elevated or higher end testosterone that they would benefit from DHEA in terms of increasing testosterone levels. If your testosterone levels are low or on the lower end, you might see a slight increase. Or if you're a woman, then women generally see quite a lot of uh, benefits from DHEA. But men who already have high testosterone, such as uh, Dave, then at least they don't see, there's no studies that they would um, see additional uh, benefits, if that makes sense. Pregnenolone, 50 milligrams, is another steroid hormone, and uh, it also helps with uh, recovery, sleep, and uh, mood even. Mitochondrial energy optimizer with PQQ, so uh, this is similar to CoQ10, but PQQ is slightly more potent for the mitochondrial uh, function than uh, CoQ10. Neo40 Pro, Neo40 Professional is a clinically researched 
patent and technology that helps support healthy blood pressure levels already in the normal range, increase nitric oxide levels, promote artery vasodilation, promote increased circulation, support healthy arterial function, and support cardiovascular heart health. So this is more like a NO producer or NO synthesizer uh, nitric oxide that helps with uh, circulation and uh, blood pressure effects. But he already takes quite a lot of these NO uh, promoters like beetroot powder and these other uh, herb powders. They already have uh, quite a potent effect on the vasodilation and uh, nitric oxide production as well. So he's, uh, I'm not sure how much benefit he would gain from taking extra of these NO uh, producers. Okay, moving on. Morning supplements with breakfast. Anato GG which is a compound found in annatto seeds that may support healthy cholesterol, inflammation, and overall health. True nitrogen or nicotinamide riboside, 300 milligrams, that helps with NAD. And uh, yes, there is uh, a lot of studies showing uh, nicotinamide riboside, specifically true nitrogen, increase NAD in a dose-dependent manner. Biostack labs, NAD region, calcium D-glucorate, 500 milligrams, compound found in many fruits and vegetables, supports natural detoxification. LE, CD-choline, uh, CDP, choline, so a choline supplement important for the brain and liver health. LE Super CLE blend with sesame lignans, CLE supplement that helps with uh, fat metabolism. Super K, so a K2 and K1 supplement. Grass-fed beef liver, endocannabinoid system booster, so I guess some sort of a CBD product. Endothelial defense, arginine, folic acid, B6. Ergothionine, which is uh, like it's some sort of considered like a longevity vitamin. You get it from some sort of different kinds of foods like mushrooms and vegetables, and it does have interesting effects. There's not a lot of research about ergothionine as a supplement in terms of health benefits. Health, longevity, longevity, anabolic peptide support. So this supplement also costs $79.99 for 30 days. So it's a pretty hefty supplement as well. And it contains different kinds of peptides. Peptides hydrolyzed from fava bean protein, astragalus member and acanus, and uh, Panax Noto Ginseng. HMB helps with uh, muscle preservation and reducing muscle catabolism. Like, I do believe that HMB is beneficial for the elderly people. There is research suggesting HMB helps with muscle maintenance in the elderly people or people who suffer from, you know, this uh, muscle wasting. But uh, if you're having this with breakfast, then it uh, has less of a benefit. So I would I, pers- I have taken HMB as well, and I take it usually on a fastest state in the mor- morning. So maybe having HMB immediately after waking up would make more sense. Because if you're already eating, you're getting the protein from the food that already reduces the muscle catabolism. So HMB has less of an effect. Hooperzine A is also like a cholinergic compound, helps with the neurotransmitters. Mega lycopene, antioxidant in tomatoes. Phosphatidylcholine, so another choline supplement. Pro-resolving mediators, a supplement designed to support the body's natural inflammatory response, including ingredients such as EPA and DHA. SAMI, so s methionine, is a methyl donor, super absorbable tocotrienols, vitamin E form, Tongat Ali complex, so that's going to help with the testosterone. Vascanox, trying it out, supports nitric oxide. Vitamin D3, 8000 IUs. And Ultra Zeaxanthin with lutein, 6 milligrams. I do think that Zeaxanthin is a good supplement, but you can also get it from uh, quite a lot of uh, foods. So my first comment for these morning supplements is that he's taking a lot of things that are somewhat redundant, in my opinion. At least, of course, he can do whatever he wants. I'm just giving like what I would do. Or I wouldn't stack a lot of these nitric oxide boosters because excess nitric oxide can actually be harmful and cause more oxidative stress. And given that he's already eating so many nitric oxide boosting foods in his smoothie, in his uh, regular meals, then I don't see any additional like reason to take extra NO boosters, at least in my opinion, and excess NO can actually be uh, harmful. The same with these choline, choline uh, supplements, phosphatidylcholine and uh, these uh, CD-choline, CD, CDB-choline, etc. He's taking so many of them, so it's hard to say, okay, which ones work, how much would you actually need? Uh, so he's kind of stacking all these uh, similar supplements, almost like for the sake of just stacking them. And uh, you get a lot of the choline from your actual foods as well. So he eats like eggs uh, pretty regularly and uh, the other foods have choline as well. So it's hard to say, okay, which ones are redundant and which one are like unnecessary in the first place. Same with like Brian Johnson. Brian Johnson takes like, you know, 100 supplements. A lot of the supplements are kind of redundant that he has. And uh, I'm not saying that they might not have benefits. It's just that they're redundant almost. And they're kind of stacking the effects without knowing which ones uh, work, in my opinion. Morning and evening supplements are terosial, a patented blend of nutrients that provides endothelial support. So the similar with nitric oxide, promoting the production of nitric oxide. Astaxanthin, I think that is a good supplement. Skin benefits, uh, cholesterol, inflammation, blood pressure benefits in human randomized clinical trials. So this actually has 
you know, solid human evidence in clinical trials that it works, which isn't the case with a lot of these other supplements like choline, etc. Calcium alpha ketoglutarate. This is also interesting supplement. There is a like one or two studies, I believe, showing that the calcium AKG supplementation reduces biological age by up to like eight years, if I'm not mistaken, was the number. So uh, it's certainly interesting. I would want to see more research about it. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, but the problem is that it's also quite expensive. Next supplement, Nuticost DIM. So DIM is a, helps with uh, estrogen and hormone balance. Ester C, patented form of vitamin C. Keolic aged garlic extract. I think this is a good supplement. It has research and garlic, allicin, aged, aged garlic extract. They uh, have uh, human clinical trials as well showing the benefits on blood pressure, inflammation, cholesterol, blood sugar. So garlic is a really powerful food and the garlic supplements also have uh, benefits. Hyaluronic acid does have human trials, even doses of 200 milligrams, helping with skin hydration and uh, skin aging. NAC has benefits increases glutathione human, in human trials. So in these trials that they have done with glycine and NAC, the lowest effective dose was like 5 grams of NAC <laughs> and the doses of 2.5 grams of uh, NAC didn't work uh, either and the same with glycine. So you need to get, based on the trials, like 100 milligrams per kilogram of glycine and 98 milligrams per kilogram of NAC to uh, see benefits in increasing glutathione in the elderly people, so people in their 70s, 80s. Now, uh, Dave is uh, significantly healthier than the average 61-year-old person, uh, but the, there is some age-related decline in glutathione as well, starting at the age of 45 already. So for him, uh, taking 1,000 milligrams of NEC, I would presume it does have some benefits and it can help. Uh, but uh, at least based on the studies, like uh, 2.5 grams isn't even enough to see effects. Lipoic acid, antioxidant, taurine, 4,000 milligrams. So there was the recent uh, mouse study in 2023 that showed that a dose of 3 to 6 grams of taurine, so 4,000 milligrams would be in the middle of there, uh, did have uh, benefits on extending lifespan in those mice. So 4,000 milligrams would work to fit that kind of a paradigm or the results of that study. But again, it's a mouse study. We don't have a lot of human trials, at least in such large doses of uh, taurine. So I do think taurine is probably good and it has uh, benefits. I'm just not taking it myself right now on a regular basis, at least. TMG, betaine, so 3000 milligrams, uh, supports methylation, liver function and cardiovascular health. I agree. TMG is good. It even has, it even has like exercise performance benefits. I take TMG every day myself for methylation support, and I'm trying to get my homocysteine lower as well. I take only one gram per day. I might, you know, increase it actually also to a bit higher dose. Multivitamin that has vitamins and minerals, and yarrow ubiquinol. So this is CoQ10. Evening supplements, pendulum acromancia, so probiotic, pure apigenin, that uh, helps with NAD levels by suppressing CD38, and it has other anti-inflammatory effects, I agree. It's also a senolytic. It's just we don't have uh, any human trials with senolytics, so we don't know, again, like what's the nece necessary dose for the senolytics. Arachidonic acid, 1,500 milligrams, so it actually increases inflammation or it promotes this uh, cell swelling in response to resistance training, so it can actually help with muscle growth. It's just another example of like stacking a lot of supplements. So he takes this supplement that uh, is a precursor to certain inflammatory molecules in the body. So it helps with muscle growth through the increased inflammation. But then he's also taking a lot of anti-inflammatory supplements. So, you know, which one is it? Like is the anti-inflammatory supplements counteracting the effects of this arachidonic acid or is the arachidonic acid exceeding the anti-inflammatory supplement? So he needs to take anti-inflammatory supplements. So we don't know because there's no research <laughs> about that. So it's, uh, you know... I think my me message here is to let people know that you need to think about, okay, what kind of supplements are you taking? And if you're stacking a lot of supplements, you have no idea if they contribute to each other or if they cancel each other out, what's the actual effect size that you're getting. So it's just a lot of these, um, you know, people might get the imp impression that they need to just take, oh, this supplement has this research, I'm going to take it and I'm going to keep stacking all the supplements, etc., etc. Optimized ashwagandha, so everyone pretty much knows what that is, helps with stress and relaxation, it might help with testosterone as well. Extra strength avmacol, so sulforaphane and myrosinase, NRF2 activator, helps with glutathione, bacopa, helps with cognition, thorn, berber cap, berberine, 200 milligrams, helps with cholesterol, blood sugar, 
and inflammation. Beta-glucans found in uh, different kinds of uh, plants and fungi. Bilberry extract, optimized broccoli and cruciferous blend. So he's taking the uh, sulforaphane and myrosinase and uh, he's taking the broccoli and cruciferous blend as well. So it's, uh, again, stacking some supplements. Carnitine and uh, helps with energy production and fat loss. Super carnosine helps with fighting advanced glycation end products, which I think is a good supplement to take, in my opinion. I'm not taking it myself, but uh, I think uh, it would make sense why, because at least it's a, like a unique effect that you don't get from the other supplements. Chromium picolinate helps with cholesterol and uh, insulin sensitivity. Curcumin, so inflammation. So it's funny, like curcumin in uh, large amounts can suppress muscle hypertrophy, especially if you take it after training. So evening supplements, I would suggest then the curcumin comes after the training. So he's taking the arachidonic acid in the evening that supposedly increases the inflammatory response, but then he's also taking the anti-inflammatory curcumin that suppresses the inflammatory response and suppresses the muscle hypertrophy response. So it's interesting, like uh, you take the inflammatory, but then you like the anti-inflammatory, so it's like uppers downers. <laughs> so it's a bit of like, I think the timing is a bit off. So like if you want to take curcumin, then it's better to take it in the morning and uh, not after exercise. After the exercise, you might you could take arachidonic acid and it would probably have effects in increasing the cell swelling response and muscle hypertrophy. But uh, taking arachidonic acid with curcumin together doesn't make sense in my opinion. EGCG green tea extract. So uh, this helps as well with like fat burning and liver health and other benefits. But taking it after exercise again, isn't, I think, the smartest idea because EGCG is uh, mTOR inhibitor and AMPK activator, so it does the opposite of recovery. So it, you, should, you should take this in the morning, like you should take it before exercise to help with the fat oxidation during the exercise. So taking it after the exercise, uh, again, like cancels out some of the benefits of the exercise or at least mitigates some of the effects. Fatty 15, so C15 is the type of fatty acid. Fatty 15 is the world's first and only science-backed patented award-finning C15 15, a supplement that supports your long-term health and wellness. So 90-day starter kit is 119, so 120, 30-day trial kit, $50. So again, it's a pretty hefty supplement. I'm not sure exactly what this uh, does and if it's even necessary. Next up, Ginkgo Biloba for the uh, cognition and brain side. Giro Protect Longevity AI, antioxidant blend polyphenol and omega-3 fatty acids. Age a cell a supplement designed to support healthy aging by promoting cell repair and regeneration. Glucosamine chondroitin, so helps with joints. Uh, I think I do think that a larger dose of glucosamine is needed. So three grams of glucosamine sulfate, for example, is what uh, provides greater benefits for the joints. And usually the lower doses, so like one uh, one gram, one and a half grams. You, the reason why people think glucosamine doesn't work is because they take uh, such a low dose. So like one gram isn't enough generally. So like higher dose, three grams is uh, what would be more effective. Grapeseed extract, another pro anthocyanate supplement. So, you know, again, this is like another AMPK activator, mTOR inhibitor. So this would be better in the morning. Again, like <laughs> it's interesting to take it after the, the training, in my opinion. Heliocare, fern block. Fern block protects skin cells, maintains their structure, increasing collagen, hyaluronic acid, and elastin. Healthy cell AC11 supports health span by enhancing natural ability to repair DNA. So a 30 serving uh, supplement, 32 Swanson Reutery Plus, so probiotic, lactoferrin, milk uh, protein, sunflower lecithin, luteolin, lithium orotate, 1000 micrograms. So again, this, some, every time I mention lithium orotate, then people are kind of overreacting, thinking like it's always harmful. You get it from batteries, <laughs> car batteries. Uh, well, like lithium is a quite interesting supplement. And it does have a few studies showing that higher lithium levels as well as higher amounts of lithium in the drinking water are associated with longevity in different parts of the world as well. So not just one single location. So higher amounts of lithium, naturally occurring lithium in the tap water is linked to lower homicide, lower suicide, and, and uh, slightly longevity, better mental health. So it helps with um, brain health. And there are a few clinical trials as well that lithium might help with uh, some aspects of mood disorders, etc. So I have taken lithium as well. I think it's a pretty interesting and potentially beneficial supplement in a smaller doses, so like 1,000 micrograms. Lysine, amino acid, protein synthesis, collagen production, natokinase. So I've mentioned natokinase on my, on my channel as well. So it, the most interesting thing about natokinase is that it has been shown to reduce plaque scores in humans. We would probably need more studies to confirm that, but uh, as of now, I do think natokinase is a potential 
longevity supplement in the future, at least for the cardiovascular health. It has many other cardiovascular benefits as well. Nutrafol, physician formulated for visibly thicker, stronger hair. Magnesium breakthroughs is this kind of a different seven different types of magnesiums. I think it's a great product. I like it. Milk thistle helps with liver health and glutathione production. MSM, so another sulfur compound for the joints. Pterostilbene is a kind of cousin molecule to resveratrol, but there's no like human studies really about that same with uh, like resveratrol. It doesn't have any human studies showing that it's actually beneficial for longevity unless you are obese and unless you have metabolic syndrome. Pycnogenol, so it's the maritime pine bark extract pro rich in pro cyanidins and antioxidants again it's a autophagy inducer and ampk activator so you'd want to take it before the exercise not in the evening in my opinion red yeast rice helps with cholesterol levels resveratrol i mentioned it there's little pretty much very little evidence that it has any benefits in otherwise healthy people and it actually reduces vo2 max might reduce muscle growth and reduces testosterone levels as well so it only works at least in mice it only works if the mice are super obese and eating like a very uh, fatty uh, diet but in humans uh, and there in humans there is some uh, trials as well where it works in improving blood sugar and cholesterol levels but only in people who are you know overweight and with metabolic syndrome so palmetto extract for testosterone again um, i'm not taking any testosterone boosters myself uh, they might help they might work uh, and they might not work either high potency serapeptase cert 6 activator naturals sod powder so superoxide dismutase antioxidant again i wouldn't take it in the evening uh, after exercise spermidine so this supplement uh, you know there's at least two clinical trials recent ones that one found that it didn't raise blood spermidine levels and two it didn't improve cognition in elderly people so these two studies at least for me are showing that there's no point in supplementing spermidine and uh, you want to get the spermidine from the foods that you eat so like mushrooms vegetables cheese and uh, other stuff like that Uh, so he eats a lot of spermidine from his diet and the associations with longevity all are based on the dietary spermidine. So the study showing that spermidine intake is redu- linked to reduced mortality and greater longevity are based on the dietary spermidine. So I wouldn't take a spermidine supplement uh, myself. Stem regen, natural ingredients promoting stem cell release and migration. So I'm not sure, again, if there is any studies about this supplement or if you can even induce them. There are a few compounds that do help with stem cell activation and production. But yeah, like one bottle, 60 capsules, $186. You know, that's not something I would myself uh, take, at least. Stinging nettle root. So this helps with kidneys, I guess, and with uh, prostate. Zinc, 30 milligrams. Pretty high dose, like the RDA for zinc is only 8 milligrams. And taking large amounts of zinc can have quite negative effects like it can reduce your copper status which reduces hemoglobin levels and it can also increase cholesterol levels so personally i wouldn't take 30 milligrams of zinc every day especially if you're already getting quite a lot of zinc from your food like yes zinc does increase testosterone but it has other negative effects especially if you're taking as a supplement in larger quantities so he's getting a lot of the seafood like the sardines and oysters and stuff they they have already quite a lot of zinc so he's getting well beyond the rda from his diet alone Next up, every other week, if not weekly, rapamycin, 6 milligrams. So this is the mTOR inhibitor. It's uh, thought to have longevity benefits. Obviously, we don't have human trials. In uh, animal studies, rapamycin is, the, I think, the only like pharmaceutical that has been repeatedly and consistently shown to extend lifespan. And the effects are very similar to the gold standard of life extension in animals, which is calorie restriction. And uh, yeah, rapamycin is certainly very interesting and I am excited for the future trials about rapamycin. I'm not taking it myself right now, but again, it might have like some negative side effects. As of now, there are no real known side effects to rapamycin, even even in people who are taking it recreationally. Once a week or month in the evening, the fisetin, 800 milligrams, quercetin and theaflavin. So these are these senolytics and I guess he's taking it for the sake of cleaning out the senescent cells but again the problem is like i mentioned there's not there's no studies human clinical trials on the senolytics <laughs> as of now they're being done they're coming out in the next few years but as of now there's no established protocol of how much senescent cells you need to remove how much of these compounds you need to take to get those effects how frequently you should do it how should you pulse them 
<laughs> so we don't have that kind of data. So right now it's very speculative to take uh, Synalytics and do like a Synalytic cleanse a few times a month or something. It's very speculative as of now and it's hypothetical. Uh, but in the future we might have these trials. But you know these supplements are generally with anti anti-inflammatory effects, antioxidant effects, but there's no established senolytic protocol if that makes sense first of all you don't have a way to like measure your senescent cell burden there are a few biomarkers but they're not found in your like regular lab you can't measure your senescent cell burden from your doctor for example so first of all you don't know how to measure it you don't know what's the right protocol how frequently you should do it and how much of these uh, compounds you should take so i'm not doing any senescent cell cleaning myself so overall my impression with his supplement routine is that he's you know, taking a few pretty interesting ingredients, he's trying to like stack all together, and um, it's kind of hard to understand what's the goal with this routine. And uh, you know, it would make sense if he times them more properly. So, for example, he takes these anti-inflammatory supplements in the evening, presumably after the workout, but he also takes this quote-unquote inflammatory supplement, arachidonic acid, at the same time. And uh, yeah, so it's pretty all over the place, in my opinion, at least. And Given how much these supplements cost, like a few of these supplements, they costed like $70 per one month uh, package, $186 per one 60, 60 day package. So these supplements are pretty expensive. And I would imagine that he spends all, over half of all of these things on his supplements. So he probably spends like over a thousand, maybe $2,000 per month on supplements. It's hard to say which ones work and um, which ones are actually giving the biggest effects for him. So that's why I like to take more of like a conservative approach to supplements. I personally take right now only less than 10 supplements a day. And I do think the reason I take them is that because they have so much evidence and uh, proven to work. And they, we know the exact dosage. We have multiple human clinical trials showing the the effects. So uh, my approach would be to, yeah, like just take the least but most effective supplements rather than taking a lot of different supplements that also stack on top of each other and also the things that you're already getting from the diet. So all these NO boosters, all these polyphenols, all this anti-inflammatory stuff, you're, he's getting a lot of them from the diet. And the same applies to Brian Johnson as well, who's taking like 100, over 100 supplements per day. Brian Johnson is also stacking these same things without knowing if they work, without knowing what's the effect size of an individual supplement. <laughs> he says he does know that, but he doesn't really know that because he hasn't done a specific split test, so to say, because it's impossible to split test 100 supplements while controlling all the other variables. So yeah, like you will never know exactly does this supplement work and how big of an effect are you getting it from there. So that's why I created my own supplement list. You can get it for free at cmland.co forward slash supplement dash list or click the link in the description to get your free PDF of the supplements I take and the list of the most effective supplements that are out there and the list of supplements that don't work. But of course, Dave does many other things besides taking supplements. So we'll continue with his other routines. So this is his daily routine, morning routine, wake up whenever I wake up, no alarm, no stress. While still in bed, I do the Beamer B body mat. So this is this kind of like not necessarily a PMF mattress, but it's this, I've tried it myself. It's uh, this kind of a microcirculation um, device that helps with uh, causing microcirculation, as they say, and supposedly helps with circulation. It's not PMF uh, per se, but it's uh, slightly different with similar effects. Stretch the lower back, feet overhead with knees to chest. Take on waking medications and supplements, as we talked about. Begin listening to podcasts, see subscriptions and or audible book selection. And then he does, not necessarily in this order, mini trampoline, 5 minutes, various floor stretches, 15 minutes, foam roller, 15 minutes, inversion table, 5 minutes, brush teeth, scrape tongue, wash face, weigh myself, check sleep scores on uh, fitness trackers. So yeah, it's a good idea to obviously stretch and get your body moving a little bit after waking up, brush your teeth, scrape tongue, wash face, those are also underrated and uh, quite important. At least one hour after waking up, he takes the morning supplements, bioregulators of the week, various proteolytic enzymes and qualia senolytic. All washed down with home-brewed lemon tea, omnibiotic hetox probiotics, uh, Optivida health complete essentials, collagen peptides, add another half cup of three-stage filtered water to completely fill my glass mug. Method in blue occasionally H2 tablet, so molecular hydrogen, juve session, radar therapy 20 minutes, hopefully before sunrise. Carol bike sprint, then prepare and begin drinking the pre-post-workout supplement shake. 
which is the shake that we talked about, one teaspoon each of the following, Bulletproof MCT oil, C60 in extra virgin olive oil, Rosita cord liver oil, Siberian sea buckthorn oil, step outside for some sunrise exposure, agreed, that's a quite important thing, I would even do it like before, but he might wake up before the sunrise, so yeah. Normally an outdoor walk or run would occur here in warmer weather. To avoid a slip and fall injury during the winter months, I opt for the treadmill in my basement whenever the outdoor temperature drops below freezing. P90X, workout of the day, sometimes all at once, sometimes preferred piecemeal throughout the day in exercise snacks. Tap out XT, eight back abs, XT and P90X ab, Ripper X together, back to back every other day. So this kind of body weight, uh, high intensity workout, infrared sauna and meditation, 25 to 45 minutes. Inject peptides of the day when applicable. Shower with Dr. Bronner's Castile soap and occasionally using Alitura Meteorite facial scrub. Moisturize with La Roche Posay Lipicar Balm AP plus intense repair body lotion for dry skin, especially in winter. Eat breakfast. Uh, so you see breakfast menu with proteolytic enzymes. Quarterly and semi annual plasma donations twice weekly for two to three plus weeks. Quarterly. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy. 10 90 minute sessions 10 days in a row annually or semi annually for injury repair dna repair telomere lengthening and clearance of senescent cells early mid afternoon routine eat lunch occasionally i usually get too busy to stop to eat only a few times a week i have the lunch pause listening to podcasts and audible books begin watching youtube videos see subscription while eating uh, late afternoon and early evening routine end of listening to podcasts audible books and youtube videos i eat dinner typically between 3 to 5 p.m. Evening supplements plus proteolytic enzymes taken with dinner weekdays only. Begin watching Netflix in the kitchen while dining. Smart home with Philips Hue light bulbs in recessed lighting all throughout the house. All screens reduce blue light on a schedule. Good. So you put the blue blocking on, blue blocking glasses to prepare for the evening. So it's good that he uh, respects the circadian rhythm. After dinner routine, continue watching Netflix in the den while working on balance and flexibility with Bosu Ball and Fitter First Balance Board. So he's doing balance exercises in the evening, eat two kiwis. So I guess this helps with sleep. There's studies showing that kiwis help with sleep and serotonin. Occasional light snack of pistachios and chlorella. Bedtime routine, floss, brush teeth, wash face with La Roche-Posay. Apply whole body skin treatments, especially on face, neck, chest and hands, combining and or rotating the following products. Cara Omni Stem Cell Regenerative Cream and Anti-Pigmentation Formula. Differin Gel Hyaluronic Acid, One Skin OS1, Vitali Skin Care. Sleep Breakthrough Supplement uh, mixed with collagen peptides, HVM Ketone IQ. Hmm, interesting to take the ketones uh, before bed like that. And Rapamycin, inject evening peptides when applicable. Beamer body mat pray and review my daily blessings until i fall asleep so that's the there's no uh, timing of when he goes to bed but uh, that's his uh, routine so these are the highlights of uh, dave's routine his uh, supplement routine his diet his exercise and his daily routine i'm not going to go through all the testing he does i'm not going to go through all the gadgets he uses etc you you get the idea already of the general picture of what he does so my overall impression is that he's pretty dedicated to his routine he's pretty optimized in terms of that he follows it consistently he's getting great results obviously he looks great for someone who's in his 60s and he gets great results with all his uh, epigenetic tests his blood work as well as I presume and he uh, gets better results than Brian Johnson and he spends only $30,000 a year on all of this protocol which is significantly less than Brian Johnson but again like it's still quite a lot like thirty thousand dollars per year so that would be something around like two and a half thousand per month which i don't i don't i'm not sure what like what the economic difference between us and estonia would be so two thousand five hundred in estonia to spend on all of the supplements and i presume the foods as well would uh it's not it's it's definitely on the higher end in terms of estonian economics but in the us it's pretty reasonable i would presume like 2500 on all the foods and supplements would you know maybe be more than the average person but it's still uh, pretty reasonable does he need to spend all of that money you know that's his decision he does it what he wants <laughs> that's his life i'm just giving my thoughts and comments on the topic he definitely could you know if he wants to cut down on the budget or something he would definitely reduce some of the supplements because a lot of them are redundant that's kind of my main uh, comment on the supplements and uh yeah like that's 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 where he would probably gain the most uh like 
price reduction, but you know, he, he can do what he wants. And I did notice that Dave watches my YouTube channel because I was in one of his list of the YouTube subscribed channels that he watches. So uh, if you're watching this, Dave, then I've been trying to get you on my podcast. I haven't found any contact email. I tried to reach out on LinkedIn, but you haven't responded. So if you're watching this, probably you are. So then you can reach out to me on email and we'll do a podcast if you're up for it. Other than that, if you want to check out my longevity routine, then check out my evidence-based longevity routine video in the description. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click the like and subscribe. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.